welcome to the Klaus and Q show. We certainly appreciate you tuning in here tonight. I'm Jason Klaus with Quadell Edwards. And Q, we're coming in here. Um, it's a, there's, there's something in the air, right? I mean, oh, yeah. there's a sense of freshness. There's a sense of optimism. Mm -hmm. Springtime is here, and there's a lot happening. Usually around this time, and we're going to tackle this topic here shortly, but um, a couple of things I, I want to say right out of the gate that, uh, you know, Q and I, we very much, you know, we are, are equal partners in this endeavor. And with that, we kind of take turns coming up with ideas. This here tonight was his idea, and you can tell that it was his idea <laughs> based on our levels of being prepared for tonight's show, whereas I went old school and brought, you know, my 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 notebook and my pen, and I'm going to do my best to hold on to the pen to make sure it don't go flying across the set here this week. Oh man! This guy brings electronics, and like, <laughs> I just might as well sit back here and let you just run the whole <laughs> damn show. How say? <laughs> hey yo! <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> You know what? You just got to come prepared for everything that you do. Whatever you're doing in life, you know, do it to the best of your ability. You know, everybody got their own preference on how they do things, you know. I take this thing with me everywhere I go. It got all my notes in there. I'm a big note taker. So uh, when it came to this topic, I said, you know what, I got to make sure I'm prepared. And uh, unfortunately, a lot of my notes got deleted. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> so this, this, this might just be a prop. So let's not get uh, <laughs> let's not get too ahead of ourselves here. <laughs> well, I mean, obviously this is something that means something to you. Yes, you yes. Br you brought it to me. You're like, hey, what do you think about this idea for the March show? And like, I didn't it didn't take me very long at all. I'd be like, well, why not? You know, it's it's topical, it's timely, yeah. because you go into the month of March, and you, you know, the, especially yesterday when we had temperatures here in Michigan that reached into the 70s for Woo. the first time in seemingly forever. And, you know, it brought that, you know, everybody was in a good mood. The sun was out. Right. You know, there was that warm yeah. breeze going on, and everybody started thinking about this this next season, right? And mm -hmm. with that, you, you're able to open up the windows, let some fresh air in there, you know, knock the winter funk right out of it. Right. Um, and you brought up an, an, a very interesting way of, of framing this is spring cleaning for your mind. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was a re absolutely remarkable way to, to position this because it really ties into a, a part of an individual's, like their, their psyche almost. Mm -hmm. Because they want that freshness, they want that 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 renewed start. They want to right, get out right. of the house. They want to get that fresh air. What spawned this idea? You know what? We went through the holidays during the uh, winter season. There's so much that that goes on during the winter season, and uh, I believe that a lot of people kind of get cluttered up. And I and I think about when I when I say spring cleaning. You know, people think about, okay, well, I'm going to clean the house, you know, get everything up out of there that don't need to be in there. But we're not really thinking about what's going on in here during the winter time, during the, the holiday time. And, and we even had that topic, you know, talking about Thanksgiving and uh, how <laughs> a lot of negativity may enter your mind during that time. And even when we go into the, the New Year season and people have all these resolutions that they already failed now, and uh, now we're coming into spring and we got all of this stuff still clicking in our mind because we're still living back there, you know. Right. So uh, it's important to live in the present. So now we're getting into spring. You got to start smelling the flowers. The flowers haven't even bloomed yet, but you can still you can you can almost feel like they're coming. So you start smelling the flowers. You know, it's a, like a psychological thing. You know, you start smelling the flowers before they're even there, you know, right. so. This is an exciting time, I believe, and this is a good time to really get your mental psyche together right now. And I know, I don't know if you ever heard the phrase. I'm quite sure everybody heard the phrase "trash in, trash out." Right. You know, garbage in, garbage out. 
we allowed a lot of garbage to come in during the winter. So now it's time to get the garbage out, you know, and uh, you're going to get it out either in a negative way or in a positive way. You know, and what I mean by that is we take in so much mental garbage, then we start to lay mental garbage on other people. Now, you when know. you say mental garbage, I mean, kind, kind of break it down. Are we talking about, you know, like the constant negativity that we see in the news, oh, on yeah. social media? Um, you know, especially within the last couple of years, we've, we've all had to deal with, this pandemic right and, right and, and that the pandemic itself by and large you know it affected every single yeah. individual yeah. in one way or another and, right right you know as we're starting to get out of that and resort resume some sort of normalcy mm -hmm. um there's still very much the after effect that goes right on, yeah right yeah. so and it's deep very deep yeah and you know, a lot of people don't take that into consideration because it's an individual thing. Right, right. How we deal with these adversities, how we deal with challenges like having to live through something like that, like it's going to affect you differently than it is me because right, right. You know, on that level, we're not wired the same. You've had your experiences, you've had, you know, your history, and there are there are different things that trigger you than they would me, and vice versa. Right, right. So I feel like part of of the spring cleaning for our minds and stuff like that, and this was one of the various aspects that we can take of it with it, is you know we need to clean out not just what's in our mind, but we need to take that opportunity to you know, clean out everything around us in terms of negativity. And unfortunately, yeah. that includes um, cutting out some 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 toxic people, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah, I mean, which is not the easiest thing to do, you know, because you might be, there's people that may be close to you, you mm -hmm. know, and sometimes that's the challenge because you, you're like, well, I don't think it's meant for me to distance, distance myself from this particular person, even though that person may be really, been, have really been a negative impact on you, but you might not see it that way. Right. Because how close the person is. So it, it, it can be a tricky situation where you're talking about, you know, the negative people. And I do believe that there's people that you should, you know, cut loose because everybody's not there to support you. You know, they may seem like they are right. because you're able to they're able to benefit off of you. But, you know, everybody is not there to support you. And I always say I'd rather people to be around me that appreciate me and not tolerate me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> true. True story. I mean, that that's the, that's a huge thing about it, because it's that negativity that we may not see. Because like like what you're saying, it is so close. Yeah. You know, you just yeah. kind of I don't know. Be, I don't know how to to analyze it other than it's just some. I think it's a comfort level too. Right. You're, right. You're used yeah. to this person, uh -huh. and in in one part of your mind, you're like, they wouldn't want to hurt me. Why would they want to hurt me? Or right. You yeah. Know, mess me over or, or what have you. You and don't want to believe it. Yeah. yeah, but it takes an outsider looking in sometimes where you're like, dude, why aren't you not seeing what's really happening here? Yep. And it, it, you know, I don't know. But that has such a tremendous impact on all of these thoughts that go on in our minds, and especially in the wintertime because we're, we're cooped up in the house. Yeah. I mean, unless you yeah. love the... The great outdoors during the winter time, you're into the skiing, the snowmobiling, and and all that kind of stuff, which is great. That's what mm -hmm. the state's known for, right? Um, but by and large, there's a lot of people that don't subscribe to that that particular <laughs> hobby, right? Right, right. And you're stuck in not stuck in the house, but I mean, you are primarily in a, in a, in a closed area, uh, and you don't have any kind of real avenue to just kind of fully decompress you know if you are somebody that enjoys the outdoors but you can't hand handle the cold and the snow and, and right, all this right and i get that i mean the older i get the more less tolerant i'm becoming of snow 
you know, and as kids, I love snow. Yeah. You know, not so much no more. Yeah, you I'm know, really care for it. <laughs> no. Um, but as we try to, you know, declutter our brains, try to, you know, clean out all of that stuff rolling around. Mm -hmm. How much? How much of the fact that it is legit springtime and the warmer temperatures and stuff like that? How much is that playing a role? Do you think in these people's psyche, in terms of this is the time that I can finally, you know, take a breath or whatever? You know, it's almost more uh, kind of like more symbolic because uh, you know you got the fresh air now, so mm -hmm. uh, people kind of think of freshness. So yeah. you know. It's, it, it goes all the way around. So now I can be, my, 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 my mind can be fresh. I can, <laughs> my whole household can be fresh. Everything can be fresh. I'm more excited and I can go out and, you know, enjoy the flowers and all the, the, the nice weather and everything. And I feel like that, that and, and you know what? Also, uh, people start thinking about, okay, vacations. Now I'm thinking about vacations and stuff. So it kind of, people get more excited during the warmer season and it's not, it's, I'm going to say a majority. Everybody's not the same. You know, everybody got different ways of handling the seasons and everything. But uh, I think mentally, this is very symbolic to, you know, what we should do. That's mm -hmm. freshen our minds. We, 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 we want to freshen everything else. <laughs> so it's important to freshen the mind because your, your, your mind is a lot more important than cleaning the house. I mean, I'm not saying it's not bad. It's, it's a bad thing to do that, but... Taking care of that mind is very important, and I believe there's a lot of things that we need to really detach from. Okay, well, let's start breaking this down. Now, when when you are legitimately cleaning your house, you're using the cleansers, the cleaners, and yep. all this stuff, like mm -hmm. you have actual f physical tools, right? Right, right. When we go through the process of clearing our minds, cleaning our minds, you can't take an SOS pad exactly. up your nose and scrub your <laughs> yeah. brain. You shouldn't do that. No, no, yeah. not, no geez, oh, peach, I don't recommend it at all. No, <laughs> that that was that was simply a joke. That was simply a joke. No. We did not mean that at all. So don't take it the wrong way. <laughs> you know, because somebody's gonna be like, I can't get this pad. Oh, I gotta nose. try this out. <laughs> no, it doesn't work that. What a don't world work we that live way. in. <laughs> um, but back on topic here. Um, what? What can we do? What tools do you think have to come into play? Tools in, in quotation marks, obviously, that we can use to, cl to clear our minds. What has to happen for us to actually go through the process of clearing our minds? Well, you got to find your inner peace. You got to find your <laughs> sanctuary. <laughs> I mean, you, you, you got to find what really, uh, you want, you, you, you want, Comfort, but not just the temporary comfort, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. It's uh, you got to find that peace that's inside because we all got a we got a peace that's inside. We just don't know where it is sometimes. <laughs> so sometimes it's hard to find it because we are, we're surrounded by so much distractions. We're surrounded by so much negativity and all this stuff going on in the world. You can turn on the news, and it takes you off off track because now. You can Especially watch new nowadays. Right? Exactly. You yeah. know, watch it for five minutes and now you're depressed. Yeah. So that that's those are things that we really need to eliminate. I'm not going to sit there and watch the news like I'm watching a sitcom. You know, <laughs> I'm, it's, it's just certain things that you really got to take in consideration on your inner. You got you got to think about building that inner peace and bringing it out to the surface. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's not it's not an easy thing. I'm saying it and it and, and people are probably like, well, how do I do that? You know. But you got to really, what do you enjoy? What do you, what do you enjoy? Who do you enjoy? And, and are they toxic to you? Is whatever you're doing that you're, you're, you're building your inner peace with, is it toxic to your long-term being, you know? And uh, unfortunately, a lot of people find toxic ways for peace. Dude. <laughs> Everything you just said <laughs> just then registers so hard right now <laughs> because I wholeheartedly understand exactly what you're saying. That inner peace 
if you don't have inner peace, I've talked about this as recently as this week on the podcast. <laughs> if you are not right with yourself, you will never be right with anybody else oh, or for so anybody true. else. Yeah. You will be, you, you, you will, it's not like you're a complete piece of crap and you have no worth whatsoever. Like you're, you're, you're getting by on kind of like bare minimum. You're like, you're mm -hmm. running on autopilot right, because you're right. going through the motions. When you, when you get to a point where you're just rolling through the motions, you are not demonstrating your best self and, and subsequently you are not your best self for the ones that need you to be. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And then that starts coming into play and it's like a vicious circle, man, and, and it rolls around your yep. mind all the, all day, all night until the point to where you, the merry-go-round can only go around so many times right, before right. you start feeling a little bit nauseous. Yeah, right? you know, yeah. Perverbally speaking. Turn into a speaking. domino expect. The uh, domino effect, right? You know, you got to get out. <laughs> you got to get out you, of there. You got to figure so something else out, or you're going to have a steamy mess at at the, at the end of it, in one way or the other, right? Yep, yep. And, and it's not only going to hurt you, but it can hurt the people around you, yeah. because you got people that's looking up to you. You know, uh, like for me, you know, I got my kids. I got to be the best example to them. So if I don't have inner peace. I could be affecting them in a negative way. And it's not just kids. You know, you got, you can have somebody that's 80 years old that's, that's looking up to you. Right. You know, so, so it really doesn't matter. But you have to set that example. You have to set that example. So it's good that, you, you know, you're finding your inner peace, not only for you, but really for your surroundings, for, your, for the people that you call loved ones, you right. know. So it's important, man. It's really important. You you talk about leading by example and inspiring people and people looking up to you. You very much are the epitome of that, especially in the place where where we work at. Yes, yes a lot yes. of people look up to you. A lot of people come to, you know come up to you and ask for your advice and this that and or or the other. So you are like the the epitome of what you're talking like what what this dude just said is how he truly lives his life and you can tell with you because you you know we work on an assembly line where there is people from all walks of life oh oh my goodness <laughs> there has never been such a potpourri of humanity in one concentrated area that i've experienced than where where we're at I'm trying to be as vague as I can, <laughs> right? Um, yeah. But you can look up and down the line in, in our area, and you can see just by physical presentation. Right, yeah. What kind of mood or mindset that these folks are in. Imagine if it's to a point to where you can physically see just by the way they yeah. they move, they stand, yep. they, they present themselves. If you can pick up on that, especially if it's somebody that you don't necessarily have a close friendship with, but you know you know of them right, because right. You, you see them every, every single day. day. Um, but if it gets to a point to where it starts to f physically alter their presentation to where it has like a negative aura to it, what in the hell is going on in their mind? Right, right, right. So I mean, these are the ones that really need to start applying this. Oh yeah. Inner peace is obviously the way you want to start, right? Right, right. And if you really think about it, uh, the ways to identify if you're having uh, mental clutter issues and all this negativity in your mind is, you know, just like you said, you will see it because they take it with them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they take it with them. I know. And, and I'm going to let me humble myself. I'm not there yet. I'm not all the way there yet. You know, but one thing I did, I did learn, you know, when I when I deal with issues, uh, you know, I try to I try not to take it with me. Mm -hmm. You know, I try not to carry it all around because then you're starting to affect other people. You know, you, you, you ever work in an area where the aura is just like pff, so negative and everybody's just it's, it's just dead in there. Yeah. You know, and miserable, very miserable because it loves company. Yeah. <laughs> so one person is miserable. Everybody else got to be miserable. So we, <laughs> we, <laughs> one thing you don't want to do is be miserable for eight hours straight. Right. You know, working on an assembly line. And and uh, unfortunately, a lot of people are taking their issues with them, you know, and 
n n nobody on that line is perfect. Not me, not Jason. No nobody's on, on the line is perfect. We all got issues and we all got situations that we're dealing with, but never put your situation on nobody else. Right. Never put your, situ your situation. And, and sometimes you it's not you saying, hey, I'm going through a situation. Right. Take it. It's not that. <laughs> it's, it's not that all the time. Sometimes it's just the way you're carrying yourself and, and, and you got other people looking at you and they're start, starting to pick up on that vibe, you know? It's, it's, it's almost contagious, you know? So it's important to, that, that's why I, I always come in with a smile on my face. I could have I could went through hell before walking through those doors. But I'm coming there with a smile on my face and I'm gonna be me, you know? Right. Because people look up to me for encouragement. Right. So if I'm not there to encourage them, you know, the vibe can change. And it's, it's not like it's my job to do that, but it's me being an example. And I believe that's where a lot of people lack right. because it's not being carried correctly around, you know, to, it don't even have to, we, we use work all the time because that's, that's, you know, what we deal with. But the same stuff happens in the grocery store, same stuff happens when you go visit your cousin house or, or you're going to the park, walking your dog, uh, you know, you run into somebody and all of a sudden you're negative, they're looking at you and then now they're hanging their head down. Right. And, and I know I, Sometimes I get on this rant, you know, I, I, I go and go. It's all right, but, man, uh, we, we have an hour <laughs> of air time to fill. But one thing, there's a story that, w that was told to me one time. It was, uh, it was, uh, man, I'm trying to remember correctly. There was a lady driving, driving down the road, very depressed, very depressed, really thinking, of, probably thinking about suicide, I don't know what they're thinking about. Stopped at a red light, and another car drove up next to him with the windows down, looked over, gave the biggest smile that they were able to, the biggest smile ever. It meant to, the world to that person that was going through depression. Sometimes a smile can save somebody's life. And it's so, it's so some of the things that we call positive always get you know tucked under because we think that it's not, that big of an impact, but impact is so important, <laughs> you know, and I think about what is impact? Like if I hit this tablet, it's going to fall over. That means it moved. So sometimes that impact will help somebody move in the right direction. And that's what we need. Everybody needs some type of impact, you know? It's just a, a classic example of how the smallest things can make the biggest impact. <laughs> yeah. Smiling at somebody when they're absolutely in the dumps mm -hmm. or complimenting them on something, they smell good, their hair looks nice, right, like they right. like their shoes, whatever the case may be. It is those little things and if that happens at the right perfect moment when that person really needed to hear that, you just, you they're gonna remember that. Oh yeah. For not just you know, the rest of the day, but likely into, into tomorrow. And, you know, I just saw something something that somebody wrote uh, here the other day, and it's like, you know, a, a complete stranger will remember you years down the line for one act of kindness. Oh, man, yeah. One, and it doesn't have to, it's not like you paid off their mortgage. It doesn't have right, to be right. something on that level. It could have been something very, in the grand scheme of things, seemingly insignificant but to that individual that meant something other people's impact and how they correspond is a huge contributor to cleaning out your mind right yes it is yes it is and this is where getting rid of the toxicity comes into play it's worth it it is it's worth it Th that's that's the issue though q is there are people who, for whatever reason, have had to look at their lives, look at the people around them, and actually look at themselves in the mirror 
and get right with that person that's looking back at them because it, right, yeah. that's the one person you will never BS. You, I mean, anybody that, that, that's listened to the shows or anything, you've heard me say that quite a bit here because it's absolutely the truth. Oh, yeah. Yes, you will never, ever outsmart yourself. Like, you, you, you could try to tell the narrative that everything is fine and this, that, and the other thing, but in the back of your mind and in the pit of your stomach, you're going to feel that. So in order to find that inner peace that you were just talking about, you got to start looking objectively as possible who who and what is causing these feelings. Get to the root. Yep. yep. And a lot of people don't make those cuts, those breakaways, because... They don't want to hurt the other person's feelings. They don't want to go into a tailspin because it's something new. It's out of the it's out of the norm. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't like change. They don't like dealing oh, with any man. of that stuff, right? The fear of the unknown prevents people from doing what they really, in the grand scheme of things, for their own best interest, well-being. Oh man! They don't execute the plan. They would just assume stay in a pretty crummy situation or relationship or what, whatever the case may be. And next thing you know, you're looking back on 15 <laughs> years worth of time and for what? Right. You know, Sitting you've right. wasted, all, wasted all of that time. And it goes back to at some point you, you have to come to grips with the fact that we deserve as individuals to be happy. Yeah. You know, and, and if we can do that by helping our friends, our loved ones, things of that nature, that's great. But if those people that are closest to you in your circle are the ones that are causing all of these ill feelings and mm -hmm. all of these, you know, all this conflict and controversy and the drama and all this right. other crap, friend, family, whatever, they got to go, right? Absolutely. And, uh, you spoke on that fear thing. Uh, man, I'm going to tell you, fear, <laughs> that's a big blockage right there. Yeah. Man. And, and if you really break down fear, F-E-A-R, false evidence appearing real. <laughs> <laughs> false evidence appearing real. It's not, whatever you're scared of is not even a factor. It's not even there. It's, it's all in here. It's all in here. You have really no reason to, 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 to fear. I say you just keep moving forward. You know, emo those emotions that we deal with on a daily b basis, you know, right up in here, very important that we really don't take care of. You can wake up and choose to be happy. Mm -hmm. You know, you make the choice. See, I'm going to be happy today. Sometimes you got to talk to yourself. I talk to myself all the time. People might think I'm crazy, but I talk to myself. I say, I'm going to be happy today. I'm not going to let this bother me. I'm not going to let that bother me. I'm not going to be fearful of change i'm not going to be fearful of this that or the other i'm not going to be i'm not going to be fearful you know because really it does nothing but lead to worry worry is the most useless emotion <laughs> ever it's like sitting in a rocking chair you're moving but you're not going anywhere right it's so useless and once you're finished worrying the problem is still there because you didn't deal with it because you was too busy worrying yeah so it's important that we really, we got to clear that all out, you know, just clear it all out, find that inner peace. I guarantee you, if you find your inner peace and really dwell on the things that do make you happy and enjoy life, because look at, you look at your surroundings. Flowers are starting to bloom. There's a lot of beauty out in the world. Yeah. There's a lot of beautiful people out in the world. There's good people. There's, there's a lot of people missing out on good people because they're holding on to bad people. <laughs> True story, man. They're blocking it. They're bl they're blocking your good people. You sometimes you got to clear the clutter, and think about. And, and I you always use this analogy for people who, who who are hoarders. People who have all this stuff in their house, all this old stuff. You have no room for the new stuff. You got to clear the old stuff before you even get the new stuff. So the problem is same thing with your mind. You got all this old raggedy stuff in your mind negative stuff and you have no room for the positive you have no room so you have to clear clear your mind no matter what's going on and we're 
we're going through a pandemic, we're going through a war, there's so much going on on the news, people are dying left and right, and, and we're all dealing with death, we're, all, we're still dealing with death, right. and, and the effects of it from, the past, from past deaths, you know, it's, we're still dealing with it, and how can we really get that inner peace when we're still dealing with such serious situations? It's, it, you just gotta really find, you, you gotta dig deep. Yeah. You really gotta dig deep, you know, because it's, it, it's, it's not the easiest thing to do, but it's, the, it's gonna be the most effective thing that you will ever do. I, I couldn't agree more, you know, it's a lot of it, and there's gonna be people that, that watch this or listen to it through whatever, but, you know, they're gonna be like, well, it's not always that easy. Right, yeah, it's could, not. And no, it's not, because if, if you are dealing with a multiple of different situations that are bringing a tremendous amount of negativity, it is going to be a little bit more difficult to push that out. It's but a lot this of weight, is, yeah. It is, there is a lot of weight, but that's where you're going to have to dig down deeper and find that reserve, that, yeah. that strength that you didn't even know you had. There you go. But it's 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 in there. You just got to find a way to re-harness that negative energy that is threatening to to keep your mind cluttered, mm -hmm. to keep you from advancing to where you want and need to be yep. in this journey we call life. Right. Right. And stay consistent with it. Yeah. You know, sometimes we might have that good positive day where we're digging deep and we're feeling good about ourselves. Then the next day. We're back in the dumps. So it's important to really stay consistent with finding that peace and actually sticking with it, you know? Sticking with it and, and clear out all the distractions because a, a lot of things will take you right out of that <laughs> positive momentum that you might have, you know? Because other things are gonna pop up. Yep. And, and that's the thing, you know, we're still dealing with stuff that, you know, from the past when things in the future is getting ready to come and hit us hard. So you almost gotta make sure you get that inner peace before you are prepared for the next obstacle that you got, that, that, that next hurdle you gotta jump. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't be jumping on that last hurdle when that hurdle's coming up. I'm gonna fall and break my leg or something, you know? Right. So, it's, so it, it's important that we are in a mental space where we can take on all challenges, which is not the easiest thing to do. Taking care of that mind is very hard with, everything that's going on around yeah. us. Very, very hard, but it's it's something that you really, really, really gotta push for and you gotta really uh, stay consistent. I'm, I'm, I'm big when it comes to consistency, you know. Doing, doing the same thing and getting the wrong result over and over, that's insanity. Right. <laughs> so I, I believe that there's somewhere in there where you gotta kinda change things up and uh, really find out who you are, you know? And, and one thing that I always tell people is you gotta understand the people around you too. Like, I, I expect Jason Klaus to be Jason Klaus. I don't expect him to be somebody else because then I might be disappointed and I, we're not gonna like each other. Right. <laughs> so we have to understand who people are and we gotta really, and that's how you accept people. You gotta understand who they are and expect them to be who they are. You know, and that's part of that mental clarity when dealing with people. Very important. Couldn't have said it better, man. <laughs> Could not have said it better. Um, is there anything else you wanna add to this topic uh, to put a bow on this part of, of the show here tonight? I think we got a big bow on it already. Yeah, I really oh, yeah, I'm I, tighten it up. <laughs> <laughs> why don't we do this we are going to run a quick time out more of the klaus and q show is right after this break all land tv invites you to take part in our 10-week video production class the class meets on monday nights from 7 p.m to 9 p.m and offers instruction on studio production field production and non-linear editing Upon completion of the class, you get access to ONTV's facilities and equipment to produce your own program or short film. The cost is $30 for Lake Orion residents, $60 for non-residents. For more information, give ONTV a call at 248-393-1060 or visit orionontv.org today.
Have you ever thought of producing your own podcast? ONTV offers the facilities, equipment, and training to help you get your own podcast off the ground. Learn how to record your show and get it out to the world. Cost is $25 per person, which gives you access to ONTV's podcast room and equipment. For more information, give ONTV a call at 248-393-1060 or visit orionontv.org today. And welcome back to the Klaus and Q Show here on ONTV. I'm Jason Klaus. He's Claudel Edwards. And uh, we just we went pretty deep into the woods on a pretty important topic, the process of cleaning out your mind, spring cleaning for your mind, if you will, especially this time of year. St. Patrick's Day was yesterday, and uh, the NCAA tournament is going on now, if you're a big basketball guy. Uh, for us, Q, and, and we're doing this segment for this reason, because... Um, one of the things that I have heard on something of a regular basis from, you know, friends of ours that have watched the show is they enjoy the banter that we do or how we break down professional wrestling. Absolutely. And this being the show, the, our show, that, that happens before the biggest WWE event, the biggest pro wrestling event of the year, WrestleMania 38, is coming up here very shortly, April 2nd and 3rd. Uh, Two-night extravaganza in Q. Stupendous. <laughs> Stupendous, yeah. <laughs> Vince would love you right now. <laughs> um, n n number one, I guess we'll start here. You talk about WrestleMania. You've been a longtime fan of pro wrestling. You've been a longtime fan of WWE. What does WrestleMania mean to you as a fan uh well, well let me i want to say this really quick i want to say rest in peace to scott hall he was one of my favorites you know growing up uh he was a big influence you know he really got scott hall was probably probably in my mount my personal mount rushmore so i just wanted to say that rest in peace scott hall uh wrestlemania has been big ever, oh man my, the first wrestlemania that i watched live that, i think it was wrestlemania 12 um we got on pay-per-view and i still remember it i remember it just like it was yesterday i mean right and sean and the iron man yeah match. the iron man yeah. match yep that was big for me uh, WrestleMania, ever since then, you know, I went back and watched them all. I've seen all the WrestleManias, you know, uh, just a spectacle, man. It's just, and it makes you feel good, you know, just sitting there watching it, you know, and uh, just enjoying all the st stars being born. You got a lot of new stars being born. You think about WrestleMania uh, uh, 14 when Austin was mm -hmm. coming up and everything, man, and go all the way back to Hogan and Warrior, you know, big moments, man. It's right. just so many big moments. Andre being slammed uh, for the first, well, technically it wasn't the first time. Right. But, uh, <laughs> first time on a worldwide stage Yeah, like first that. time with, you know, Hogan in the Silverdome and yep. in, 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 in my backyard, you know. So uh, I'm, I'm telling you, it's WrestleMania is a special, it has a special place in my heart, you know, always will. Uh, even though the, the industry is different, a little bit different now, but it's still, you know, still here. Right. Know? So I, I enjoy it. I realize, you know, those who are watching this, if you're not a wrestling fan, I realize what we're talking about may seem pretty ridiculous to you, and I can understand that. Don't turn it off, though. No, no, no. Keep no, us going. No, cause we're, because, well, we're funny, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> um but you like it, like if you're a football fan, it all boils down to the Super Bowl. Yeah. If, you know, if you're into baseball, it's about the World Series or the Stanley Cup. If you're into hockey, whatever. Like every sport and entertainment entity has their one big thing. And if you are a fan of it, if you are diehard fan or, or what have you, like you anticipate these events. WrestleMania for us is is the industry of professional wrestling. Yes. It, it, it's just like, I don't care who you are, I don't care where you are, I don't care what you do, you have heard of WrestleMania. Right, right. So it has that that connection to pop culture. Yeah. It's on that status. 
Oh, now yeah. it's gotten to a point to where they can put tickets on sale in a hundred thousand seat. Well, I mean, I guess this is kind of a bad example. We'll, we'll say a seventy-five thousand seat stadium. They can put the tickets on sale in November. The show doesn't happen until April. There's no, we don't know what the matches are going to be. We don't right. know what the main event is yeah. going to be. But that thing is going to sell out. Just want to be there. Just because <laughs> it's of the name of the show. Mm -hmm. This year, like they've done the last couple, it's a two-night thing. I, I love that. Do you? Yes. Tell me why. You know what? Sitting, it, WrestleMania has gotten so big, and, and this actually shows, this is proof that WrestleMania is too big for one night. Because, you know, I, I understand people, you know, s complaining about sitting sitting down for seven hours uh you know you got the two hour pre-show and then you got about four to five hours of wrestlemania i'm fine with that <laughs> but you know now you have two so that, that books my whole weekend you know so i'm i'm actually good to go. that's more wrestling if you think about it in that <laughs> that that way you know you got more wrestling i understand that I guess as a traditionalist, though, and I'm not saying that you're not, I'm just looking at it from a, a different point of view is I've always, you know, because they don't break the Super Bowl up if it goes right. into overtime. Yeah. You know, they're like, well, we're going into overtime. We'll see you tomorrow night. You know what <laughs> I mean? That does not happen. Right. Um, I've always enjoyed it just as the one night spectacle. You know, it was a weekend thing because you had your Hall of Fame on Saturday. You had the actual pay-per-view on, on Sunday. And I I was totally okay with that, and I loved that. And it was, it was tradition. It's what became the norm. Um, if anything, I would have liked to have seen the show moved to Saturday night and move the Hall of Fame to Sunday, but yeah. I digress. Um, but I... I I feel like a lot of what you're saying is right. It's become too big for one night. Why does every single contracted wrestler ha have a spot on WrestleMania? <laughs> Back in the day, in the vast roster that mm -hmm. was the World Wrestling Federation, like not you didn't see SD Jones right, at WrestleMania yeah. three. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. Did, everybody didn't make the cut. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, you look at WrestleMania 1, this is a classic example. Jimmy Superfly Snuka did not have a match on WrestleMania 1. <laughs> yep. But they had to find a spot for him, so they put him in the corner of Hogan and T in the main event. Right, which is right. great. I, I understand that, but that's Superfly Snuka. And at that time, you he big. was one of the biggest you stars big. in yeah. the WWF. Oh, my goodness. He doesn't have a match on WrestleMania 1. <laughs> You know, so my point here is, it does. You know, it used to be the elite of the roster right, right. earned their spot to have a match at at WrestleMania. Now, like much of what you're saying, it is too big for one night. Yeah, they you know started incorporating the Andre the Giant Battle Royal and just yeah. to get everybody on the show to have their big. Mania the big payday, payday yeah, right? The big payday. Um, it is. It is two nights. Uh, Saturday night, April second. Sunday, April third. Um, let's run down this card real quick. Uh, this is. Uh, they're looking for night one. Of course, this is subject to change. Of course, but it's going to be headlined by the SmackDown Women's Title match between Charlotte Flair and Ronda Rousey. Who who you got in that? You know, I, they're going to give it to Ronda. I believe that Ronda is the, the I don't want to say clear cut, but, you know, Charlotte, she's been on top for, you know, quite some time now. And uh, they're not going to bring Ronda back and have her lose her first big match at WrestleMania. So I, I believe Ronda's taking it. I think it's going to be a very, very entertaining match, too. I do, yeah. too. You're talking. They look, mix pretty good. Charlotte Flair in my opinion, is the the best worker in professional wrestling bar none. You know what? I'm gonna add to that. I think she's the best heel in wrestling today, man and woman. That's a pretty powerful statement because there's some pretty big yeah. uh, uh we got Roman. Yeah. We got Roman but Nobody is more natural 
as a heel. <laughs> <laughs> as Charlotte, everybody hates Charlotte. That's Even a, her co-workers. That's just a nice way of saying that she's a real witch. You know what I mean? Um, I love her, though. You know, I, I do, I'm too. Just, I think I, she's awesome. I, she, she is the epitome of a star. Oh, yeah. You know, oh, yeah. You don't even have to put the last name on, don't have to. on her name. Right. She, she has become a, a standard bearer of the women's division oh, absolutely. and a marquee star in all of WWE, all of pro wrestling. Oh, There's yeah. no reason why her star should not keep exploding. Right. Ronda right. Rousey, you know, obviously, um, you know, she's a big name. She's got a big following. That's great. They brought her back at Royal Rumble, wins Royal Rumble. And uh, I mean, I can see where you're going with this. Um, it is the main event. So I can totally see a title switch. Yeah. However, um, I don't think so. I think maybe, Charlotte maybe keeps it, and here's why. Because also on night one, Becky Lynch is defending the Raw Women's Title against B uh, Bianca Belair. You want to talk Two about? You want to talk about a long reigning champion? <laughs> Becky Lynch's time has got to come to an end. I, I agree. Over it. I agree. Yeah. Bianca Belair, in my opinion, and I'll go ahead and say it is going to get to Charlotte Flair level within five years. Barring any major injury, barring any major catastrophe, there is no reason why Bianca Belair cannot ascend to Charlotte Flair status I agree. in all of wrestling. I agree. I, I, would say, I would say very close. I would say I'm very close. Uh, I, I would say uh, she's going to surpass Sasha. Oh, jeez, old Pete. I mean, that's She's not... going to surpass <laughs> Sasha, and she's going to be right under Charlotte. You you hold <laughs> Sasha Banks in that high regard? You know what? I do, yeah. actually. I, I, I do. You know, she kind she kind of reminds me of... Uh, oh, man, how can I put it? She's kind of like the... She, it's the character work. You know, she, I, I, I love the character. Mm -hmm. She's a... She's also good as a heel to me. She's better as a heel than she is as a face. Agreed. But but you know she puts on some of the, some of the best matches when it comes to like her in ring work, and her style is. You think that she can't pull some things off that she that she pulls off, but she, I think she's pretty good in the ring. Okay, I mean. I'm not mad about it. I, just, <laughs> I didn't realize that. See, you, that's what makes the show. We can't all we can't agree on everything. I no, I'll, no. <laughs> I mean, I just to me, she's just she's just not a top three performer. But I I can I can understand a lot of Sasha Banks fans. I I get it. Do you put her? Where do you rank her as far as the horse winning? <laughs> <laughs> uh... Jeez. We know where Charlotte is. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, obviously. I, I guess I would put her, at, as far as those four, I guess I would put her at number two. Yeah. I I can't deny that. Um, listen, I I appreciate the fact that celebrities become involved in WrestleMania, and, and if they can get into a safe situation to where they're actually performing in a match instead of doing, like, a promo or... Right, right. But, man, dude, <laughs> this tag team match they got know. for night one, Ray and Dominic M Mysterio against The Miz, who I feel absolutely horrible for in this whole thing, Yeah. and Logan Paul. Now, I I'm going to be honest. Up until this guy started showing up in WWE a year or two ago, I had no idea who this guy was. <laughs> Apparently he's some YouTube sensation. Yeah, I don't know. Um, it doesn't that. mean a doggone thing to me. Um, so everybody's like, "Oh my God, that's Logan Paul." I could give two <laughs> craps. I, I like <laughs> this man. The Miz deserves better. I agree. Um, I really Ray feel Ray like, deserves better. Yeah, uh, I don't feel like Dominic Mysterio has earned he's the cachet there. to be he's on not WrestleMania. There yet. He's not there yet. Put him on on the pre-show. Yeah. Put him in the battle royal. Right. You know, get a picture with them in the ring with the banners and the bells and the whistles and all that stuff. That's great. Yeah. This is a high-profile real estate on WrestleMania, and you're giving it 
The Miz, dude. Yeah, I'm, that, I'm not really interested in this one. Because this Logan Paul thing, and I'm not big. I don't even know who he is either, really. But uh, I don't know what he does on YouTube. or. He's not my gimmick. <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't understand. I don't know. You know, he should be in the corner. I can see him in the corner of somebody, you know, just being out there. Well, I mean, put put some stripes <laughs> on him and have him ref a match or something. Yeah, something. Yeah. You know, I'm okay with that. Um, I can say the same thing here. I mean, I can see where this next match comes. Drew McIntyre, Happy Corbin. They've been trying to build a story here. Yeah. I appreciate the fact that they've tried to build a story here. Um, but at the same time, I... Uh, I want so much more for Drew McIntyre. Oh. I, I feel like maybe they could have put him against The Miz and have the winner get some sort of a title shot at Money in the Bank yeah, or, yeah. Or, or what have you, but I really wanted more for, for Drew McIntyre. It, it really sucks what's going on with Drew, to be honest. Uh, this Even the his past feud with Jinder Mahal, uh, that should have been more of a bigger deal because yeah. of their past. Yeah. And, but they're arguing over a sword. So, I mean, I don't really understand what they're doing with them, but uh, he does deserve more for WrestleMania, and especially he's the number one baby face on SmackDown. Right. And he's in the mid card, so. Yep. Um, they have a the SmackDown Tag Team Championship match, so the Usos against Shinsuke Nakamura and Rick Boogs. Boogs. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> going with the Usos. I'm going with the Usos. Yeah. Uh, and of course, the, in my opinion, what truly is the main event, Stone Cold Steve Austin Woo. is coming to the KO show. Yes. Kevin I'm excited. O I'm excited I, for that now. That's all. That's yeah. all I, I really. I, I didn't want to see a match, but I do want to see a fight sequence. Yeah. I wasn't. The the ret people coming out of retirement. It's kind of bruised me uh, mm -hmm. lately with the whole Saudi Arabia thing and, uh, you know, Shawn Michaels coming back when he probably Awful. shouldn't have. Yeah. That match was terrible. Yep. Uh, he did great, but, you know, just when you're retired, I think you should just be retired. See, that, so, that's my thing. I Like for me, because, you know, I've, I've been a promoter. I've been an independent pro wrestler. I have never ever uttered the words, I'm retiring until exactly, I yeah. know without a shadow of a doubt, there is no f physical way I can wrestle another match. Um, so I, I have never used the word retire. Other people have used it for me, <laughs> but I have never come out saying, right, I'm right. done, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm retiring. It would have to be something pretty significant for those words to come out of my mouth. Right, right. So that's night one. Night two, real quick. I, I realize we're we need we're pushing to, it. We're we pushing need it. to wrap this up here. Yeah. The main event, obviously, the the big match everybody is talking about. WWE champion Brock Lesnar against Universal Champion Roman Reigns. I got uh, I got the Tribal Chief here. I got the Tribal Chief. Yep. Everybody's like, oh, my God, not again, not again. Hey, <laughs> th that's the match I'm looking forward to right, right. In, in night one. Um, very worthy of main event. Two world champions collide. I'm all about it. Um, the Women's Tag Team Championship, Queen Zelina and Carmella against Sasha Banks and Naomi versus Rhea Ripley and Liv Morgan. I got to believe Sasha and Naomi are taking this. I got I got a feeling they are. Oh, yeah. Okay. The match that could steal the show um, at at WrestleMania, dream match scenario. This one is a very hard one to call. AJ Styles against Ooh. Edge. A lot of people have been waiting a long time for this match. This this is going to be the match that actually steals WrestleMania 38. I agree. I, I agree. I got, I got to say AJ. I'm uh, I'm going Edge on this one. Yeah, and I'm going to tell you why real quick. Uh, AJ, he's a full-timer. You know, That's true. You got to build on that. You got to build on that. He's still got mileage. He, he just became a singles. Yeah. He's got mileage. You got to build on that. He can have a great year if he starts off with a win right here at WrestleMania against Edge. Okay. I totally, I can totally see that. I think for shock value, I think if they're going to try to push this new heel persona of Edge, he needs this win. Yeah. Um, 
otherwise, I mean, he, he didn't need to turn heel to make this match interesting. Right. You could have had two of the absolute very best in-ring performers in AJ Styles and Edge, and it would have been perfectly yeah. fine. They could turn it into a series. It could. Yeah. So. And it should. Yeah. This could culminate in some sort of step at SummerSlam or something. Yep. Yeah, you're right. Play it out. Let's tell a story. Tell a story. Tell a story. <laughs> I love stories. I'm Survey a, time. You want to hear a story? <laughs> uh, the story with this next match has been pretty enter entertaining in some degree. Sami Zayn and Johnny Knoxville. <laughs> I can't believe I just said that. Oh, man. From the show Jackass. <laughs> Johnny Knoxville is wrestling Sami Zayn. <laughs> Their banter back and forth has been has been it's pretty funny, epic. Man, it's funny man, I love man. You know I love Sami man. I, I didn't really care for him before, but I love him. But uh, I, it's kind of hard to predict this one. I mean, I mean, uh, you can go Sami. Yeah, I think I can. I would go. I probably go Sami. I would. I would really hope so. Oh yeah. I mean because. He's the wrestler in this match. Exactly, yeah. He shouldn't be Johnny looking. Knoxville is coming to get thrown through a couple of tables, I feel like. Yeah. Or yeah. some sort of big, elaborate something or another, crash scene. Um, spe speaking of crash scenes, we're going to see that when Pat McAfee is stepping in the ring with Austin Theory. And I'm going to tell you something. This Theory kid, I feel like, with, with the right direction, can really become a name in WWE. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, Theory's going to win this one. Yeah. I believe, yeah. Um, and then the Raw Tag Team Championship, RK Bro, against a team to be announced. So um, that's what they have here. It's going to be a, a tremendous event both nights. I'm looking forward to it. I know you are too. Yes, I am. And of course, The Undertaker going into the WWE yes. Hall of Fame. And anybody who has watched the show knows what huge Undertaker fans we are. In fact, I have an Undertaker show. Oh, oh there you go. In, in celebration. <laughs> so uh, we appreciate all of you tuning in here. And we will be back on the air here live on ONTV Friday night, April the 22nd, beginning at 6 p.m. We're going to have a very special guest. Our friend Brian Balf is going to stop by the show. And we're very excited to welcome Brian yes. to the show here. So you can uh, stay up to date with all of our information on Facebook. Just look for the Klaus Q Show. For Quado Edwards, I'm Jason Klaus. Be awesome to yourselves and each other. We'll see you on April the 22nd right here on the Klaus Q Show exclusively on ONTV.